Shutra, the fifth patriarch, knew of Wei Neng's enlightenment to his original nature and said to him, Studying the Dharma without recognizing the original mind is of no benefit. If one recognizes one's own original mind and sees one's original nature, then one is called a great hero, a teacher of gods and humans, a Buddha. Commentary, the fifth patriarch, knew that the sixth patriarch had become enlightened and that he recognized his original face and knew whether his nostrils faced up or down. When he held his hand over his head, the sixth patriarch knew whether it was upside down or right side up. Recently, I asked you all, when your hand hangs at your side, is it upside down? And when you raise it up over your head, is it right side up? Or is it that when it hangs at your side, it is right side up? And when you raise it over your head, it is upside down? None of you understood this principle. Why? Because there is basically no such thing as upside down or right side up. The sixth patriarch was especially clear about such questions. The fifth Vajrak knew that he understood, and so he covered them both with his robe and said, Unless you recognize your original mind, your original mind, it is useless to study the Dharma. It is said, If one recognizes one's own mind, the great earth doesn't have an inch of dirt. It changes into yellow gold, adorned with the seven precious things. Gold, silver, lapis lazuli, crystal, mother of pearl, red pearls, and carnelian. You say, it doesn't look like that to me. Of course it doesn't. You haven't recognized your original mind. When you recognize it, you will see things differently. It's like wearing tinted glasses. If you wear red glasses, people look red. And if you wear green glasses, they look green. If your glasses are yellow, then everyone looks yellow. Because you haven't recognized your original mind, the great earth appears to be covered with dirt. This is because the dirt within you is so great. What is the dirt? It is simply your scattered thoughts. For without them, the great earth doesn't have an inch of dirt. Studying the Buddha Dharma is of no benefit unless you recognize your original mind. Look at it. What color is it? Is it green, yellow, red, white, or black? Is it long or short, square or round? What does it look like? What is its appearance? To say it has an appearance is an analogy because fundamentally it has no appearance. When you recognize this no appearance, you will understand. But before you have recognized it, do not speak about it in a confused way. Recognize your original mind and see your nature. At that point, you are a Buddha, because in the final analysis, living beings are the Buddha, and the Buddha is a living being. We now have the opportunity to realize Buddhahood. Not recognizing, not seeing, however, you still must study the Buddha Dharma. Sutra. He received the Dharma in the third watch, and no one knew about it. The fifth patriarch also transmitted the seven teaching and the rope and bow, saying, and bow, saying, You are the sixth patriarch. Protect yourself carefully. Take living beings across by every method and spread the teaching for the sake of those who will live in the future. Do not let it be cut off. Commentary At midnight, the fifth Vajrayak transmitted the wonderful drama to the sixth Vajrayak, using the mind to seal the mind, and no one at all knew about it. The insiders didn't know, the outsiders didn't know, not even the ghosts and spirits knew. The fifth Vajrayak transmitted the teaching of sudden enlightenment, which points directly to the mind to see the nature and realize Buddhahood. Think this over, he said. You are the sixth patriarch. As you cultivate the Buddha Dharma, you must walk the true path. Do not simply talk about enlightenment. Do not use head, mouth, and zen, and say, I have studied the Dharma to the point that when there is no principle, I can make one up. 
I can prove that there is no truth or falsehood and that to understand that by itself is to understand the ultimate meaning of the middle way. Don't talk that way. It is just head mouth zen because it comes not from real cultivation but from jealousy and obstructions and an obsession. So be number one. If you are like that, you certainly can't be a patriarch. The fifth patriarch gave the Dharma to Hui Nung because Hui Nung always practiced the Bodhisattva way. He pounded rice for everyone to eat and so helped them in their cultivation. But that same Bodhisattva conduct is practiced here in the kitchen of this temple by the cooks. They make extremely fine food. However, when I eat, I don't notice whether it is good or not because I don't have time to investigate eating dramas. Today at lunch, didn't I say that one who tastes his food and thinks it's good or bad has no spiritual skill? Bodhisattvas help others at every level, not obstructing them. But like the superior man, mentioning their good points instead, For instance, when I announced that several people were going to leave home and asked if anyone objected, no one did. You said, I command those who want to leave home. Your not objecting is practicing the Bodhisattva way. Late at night, the Sith Patriarch easily obtained the Patriarchate. The fifth Patriarch approved and But he didn't consult anyone because he knew they would have protested. Go out into the world, said the fifth Rajyak. Protect the rope and bow, for they have been handed down from Shakyamuni Buddha from generation to generation. Take everyone across and spread the Dharma into the future. Don't let it be cut off. The fifth Rajyak sad and worried, was on the verge of tears. How do I know he wanted to cry? The second patriarch at his execution had wept as he said, During the time of the fourth patriarch, the Lankava Tarasutra will become a mere name and appearance. No one will understand it. Now in the same way, the fifth patriarch's heart welled up within him as he said, Don't allow the drama to cut off. Be careful. Pay attention. Don't be muddled or take your job lightly. It is extremely important that the drama not be cut off. Sutra, listen to my verse. With feeling comes the planting of the seed. Because of the ground, the food is born again. Without feeling, there is no seed at all. Without that nature, there is no birth either. Commentary. With feeling comes the planting of the seed. I have a feeling of loving kindness and so I have come to plant a seed. Feeling can mean compassion. I have a compassionate feeling and so I have come to plant the seed to transmit the Buddha drama to you. Because of the ground, the fruit is born again. This transmission is like putting a seed into the ground so that the plant can grow and bear fruit. Without feeling, there is no seed at all. Without feeling, no seed is planted. If no one transmits the Buddha drama to you, then there is no Buddha seed. Without the nature, there is no birth either. When there is no nature, there is no birth. That is one way to explain this verse. There is another way. With feeling comes the planting of the seed. The feeling is an emotional feeling of love. The seed is planted because of this feeling of love and people study the drama because of it. If they are not relatives, they are friends. Relatives have relatives' emotional feelings and friends have friends' emotional feelings. Because you have these emotional feelings, you come to study the drama. You come to plant the seed. Because of the ground, the food, the fruit is born again. Emotional feeling plants the seed of body because of the ground, which is a place where one can reap the fruit. On this piece of ground, you can grow the body fruit. Without feeling, there is no seed at all. If there is no feeling or emotion, there is no seed. That is, if no one came to this body manda to study the drama, there would be no feeling and no seed planted.
Without that nature, there's no birth either. You cannot realize Buddhahood without the Buddha nature. Now the Buddha nature is here and you should re realize Buddhahood. The verse may be explained in many ways, so long as the explanation is in accord with the principle. Sutra. The patriarch further said, In the past, when the first patriarch great master Bodhidharma first came to this land and people did not believe in him yet, he transmitted this robe as a symbol of faith to be handed down from generation to generation. The drama is transmitted from mind to mind, leading everyone to self-awakening and self-enlightenment. From ancient times, Buddha only transmits the original substance to Buddha. Master strictly, secretly transmits the original mind to Master. Since the rope is a source of contention, it should stop with you. Don't transmit it, for if you do, your life will hang by a thread. Commentary Didn't I say before that Chinese people have no respect for Indian people? When Bodhidharma arrived in China, everyone said, he's a hick. No one knew who he was. Even after five years in China, he was not recognized as the patriarch. True patriarchs accept the rope and bow as certification of their rightly inherited position, while impostors may try to steal the rope and take the drama by force. Shen Xiao thought a foster inheritance would be real, but it could only be false. During the time of the fourth patriarch, Three attempts were made to steal the rope and bow, and another three attempts were made during the time of the fifth patriarch. But the thieves always failed because the bodhisattvas came to the patriarch's aid. When the sixth patriarch was guarding the rope, six attempts were made. Later, the rope and bow were taken by Impressor Wu Tian. It is not certain who it was trust entrusted to afterward. The fifth patriarch cautioned Hui Neng, If you suspend a hundred pound rock from a thread, it is certain to snap. So with your life, if you continue to transmit the rope. Sutra You must go quickly for I fear that people might harm you. Hui Neng asked, Where shall I go? The patriarch replied, Stop at Huai and hide at Hui. Hui Neng received the rope and bow in the third watch. He said, Hui Neng is a southerner and does not know these mountain roads. How does one reach the mouth of the river? The fifth patriarch said, You need not worry, I will accompany you. The fifth patriarch escorted him to the Chiu Chiang. Korea station and ordered him to board a boat. The fifth patriarch took up the walls and rowed. Hui Neng said, Please, High Master, sit down. It is a fitting that your disciple take the oars. The patriarch replied, It is fitting that I take you across. Hui Neng said, When someone is deluded, his master takes him across, but when he is enlightened, he takes himself across. Although the term taking across is the same in each case, the function is not the same. Commentary The fifth patriarch instructed the sixth patriarch to leave quickly, for he knew that Shen Xiu's followers would certainly want to kill him when they realized he had inherited the patriarchate. Do not stay here, the fifth patriarch said. Stop at Huai and hide at Hui. Huai is a district in Guangxi. Wu Chou and Hui is Su Hui, now called Xin Hui. High Master is a respectful form of address as used for a teacher or an abbot. So the sixth patriarch used it to address the fifth patriarch. High Master, it is only proper that your disciple take the words. Hey, said the fifth patriarch, let me take you across the river. The master and disciple exchanged courtesies, but although they each used the same term, taking across, it meant something different in each case. For the teacher to take the disciple across, 
is not the same thing as for the disciple to take the teacher across. Kui Neng understood. When the student is confused, he said, the teacher must save him. But when the student becomes enlightened, he must save himself. Before becoming enlightened and obtaining the original substance of the self-nature, the disciple is confused and lost. His teacher advises him to work hard. Do not be afraid of the pain in your legs when you sit in meditation. If you are afraid of suffering, you cannot become enlightened. The sixth patriarch, when he hung a stone around his waist so he could pound the rice harder, was not afraid of suffering. The rock which the layman Lu, the sixth patriarch, used to tie around his waist when he pounded rice is still on Ping Mao Mountain, a Tung Shan Chen monastery, and carved on the rock is the inscription The Rock Hui Neng, the former layman Lu, tied around his waist. Sutra Hui Neng was born in the frontier regions and his pronunciation is incorrect. Yet he has received the Dharma transmission from the Master. Now that enlightenment has been attained, it is only fitting that he take his own nature across. The Patriarch replied, So it is, so it is. Hereafter, because of you, the Buddha Dharma will be widely practiced. Three years after your departure, I will leave this world. Start on your journey now and go south as fast as possible. Do not speak too soon, for the Buddha Dharma arises from difficulty. Commentary Because he was from the south, the Sikh Patriarch spoke Cantonese rather than Mandarin, so few people understood that him. Nevertheless, he inherited the mind seal of the wonderful Dharma. Master Hui Neng was truly enlightened, unlike some people who are not enlightened but treat and say that they are, who have not testified to the fruit of enlightenment but lie and say that they have. The fifth patriarch thought, This disciple knows my heart. He said to Hui Neng, Yes, it is just the way, just that way. One should take one's own nature across. Remember that. For example, someone must teach you to recite the Suragama Mantra. But once you know how, you must recite it on your own. People should not have to say, It is time for you to recite the Suragama Mantra. Again, someone must teach you to recite sutras, but then you must do it yourself. That is what is meant by taking one's own nature across. A teacher shows you how to remove afflictions he says that anger is harmful and that one should transform one's nasty temper into body. Once touched, the nature cannot be taken across unless the method is applied. The master says, don't get upset when faced with a crisis. Proceed as if nothing has happened. All things are like flowers in the sky or the moon's reflection in water. Unreal, illusory, like a dream or a dew drop. Remember that and there will be no affliction. If when faced with a situation or state of mind, you see through it and put it down, you have taken your nature across. Smoking can be a problem, the teacher says. Stop smoking. Smoking hinders cultivation. When I said that to one disciple, he said, stop smoking and give it a try. And he stopped. He took his nature across. Another disciple is fond of drinking, having studied the Buddha Dharma. He ought to have quit drinking. But he says, I'm confused. I'm not enlightened. If you stop, you become enlightened. If you don't, you sink into confusion. Whether or not you become enlightened is entirely up to you. Cutting off all unwholesome activities is to become enlightened and to take your nature across. Not understanding, you may think, the drama master says that drugs are bad, so I take some more. I take a double dose. No, I take five times as much. I keep getting high until I am enlightened. Continue to take drugs and you will poison yourself and die instead. Confused by drugs, you cannot take your nature across. Before studying the Buddha drama, you should not 
do confused and wicked things. After you have studied the Buddha drama, the prohibition is even stronger. If you continue to misbehave, you commit the crime of knowing and intentionally violating the drama. And if you are certain to fall, and you are certain to fall into the hells, there is nothing polite about these matters. If you do confused and weak things, you will fall into the hells. If I do them, I will fall into the hells. If someone else does them, he will fall into the hells. No one can avoid this. In a hundred thousand ages, the karma made is not destroyed. When the causes and conditions rebound, you undergo the retribution by yourself. No one can suffer for you in the hells. Karma refers to acts of killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, lying and drinking, all of which bear retribution in the future. Your karma does not get lost and it is you and you alone who must suffer the consequences. However, if you end your confusion and get rid of the dirt, you can easily take your nature across. The dirt in your nature is your upside down actions, your false thinking, your ignorance, your outflows, and your bad habits. Eliminate these and you have taken your nature across. When I lectured this sutra in another place, I said, If you create offense karma, you will go to the hells. If someone else creates offense karma, he will go to the hells. If I create offense karma, I will go to the hells. One person who was there objected. Dharma Master, he said, I have never seen this house. Where are they? I would like to take a look at them because I simply don't believe they exist. I said, It is easy enough to fall into the house, and if you try to fall into them, you will fall even more quickly and not escape for a very long time. I hope that those who wish to try out the house will reconsider. What kind of person can take his own nature across? A person with wisdom. Deluded people, on the other hand, cannot take their nature across. And what is more, even if a teacher tries to help them, they refuse to listen. It is like trying to teach a dog. You say, don't bite people, and the first chance it gets, the dog bites someone. So you hit it and it still bites people. Why? Because it has a st stupid nature. Cats are just the same. You can tell a cat, do not kill mice, do not take life, but nevertheless the cat kills the first mouse it sees. You may try to teach a mouse not to steal, but still it sneaks off and steals. Smoking and drinking are done by those who do not know any better. People with a true and proper understanding do not do mixed up things. People with mixed up understanding do not do true and proper things. You must correct your own faults. Your teacher shouldn't have to watch your every move and follow you around to make sure that you behave. You must take your own nature across. This is a generation. This is a um, general explanation. For if I were to speak in detail, I would not finish until the exhaustion of the boundaries of the future. I have transmitted my drama, and in three years, I will complete the stillness and go to Nirvana," said the fifth patriarch. "Go well, and whatever you do, don't be lazy. Go well." Don't go bad. Don't go the wrong way. Don't take drugs and ruin your body. For your body is your means of cultivation. If you ruin your body, how will you be able to cultivate? Go well, go well. Do your best. Quickly head south. That is certainly the kind of advice the fifth patriarch gave. But don't speak of the drama too soon. Hide your light and store up your potential. As troops are fed well, so that they may conquer every enemy and capture every city. The Buddha drama is hard to bring forth. It arises from difficulty.